Hello guys, Chris here and welcome to episode 22 of the Pocket Podcast. Today we have an awesome guest in the Cunny, the top C himself, Adam Sullivan. This was an awesome conversation and honestly, it's very different to any other podcast that he's ever been on. Adam actually went quite deep in this one, talking about his story, his life, family, business, money and the different challenges he's had along the way. You know what we do here on the Pocket, we like to dive deep into those parts of the story that make it special And this, we definitely did that in. So I'm super excited for you guys to listen to this episode. He's amazing. And I'll leave all of his deets in the show notes and the description below as well. So you can check him out if you do not already. my best foot forward every single day and these two products I take one first thing in the morning and one directly just before bed and I sleep like a baby and I feel energized and hydrated when I take this one in the morning so the hydrate I take with a liter of water it's also got a nootropic in it called coffee berry which helps me prolong having my coffee throughout the day because it's a nootropic that helps with brain function so I can get my work done early in the morning without taking any caffeine supplements or coffee and then the adrenal is a sleep formula that I have before bed bed every single night the chocolate flavor I make kind of like a hot chocolate and this is amazing it's well renowned it's the best thing in the market they've been around for like eight years now Um, maybe even more don't quote me on that one Um, but I've been taking it for at least three years myself and every single night I love this and I look forward to this so if you want to try out any of Switch's products you can actually go to the link in the description down below or the show notes and you go to my collections page on their website it has these two supplements alongside some of the other ones that I do take and you can use code Chris Griffin and you'll get 20% off your entire order or you can just go to switchnutrition.com.au and use the code Chris Griffin and you'll get 20% off all of your order. Without further ado, let's jump right into this episode with the top C, Adam Sullivan. You guys enjoy. Are we live? I think we're live. Imagine I just sat on my phone the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I come, you come in here and, and I go, mate, I need a quote from you. And you just go, nah, I run this show. I don't do quotes. In fact, you give me a quote. Inspire me. Nah, dude. It's, you it's, want me to give you a quote? Yep. Give me a quote. Don't be shit. Don't. Right, I actually do have a little quote I've been running off by okay. late, of late. I was doing a talk in front of a few people and I said... What was it? What what the fuck was it that I said? I said, <laughs> it's the things, it's the little things in life that make the difference, and it's the things that are easy to do, that are also easy to not do, and if you do those little things, that's what takes you far. Hundred percent. And uh, that sort of fucked me a bit because I'll I'll be cruising around the house and I'll see the little bit of rubbish I left and I'll go fuck I'll get it later. Then I go it's the little things and I got to clean it up. But you but reckon- by that. Well, you're gonna I was going to say, do you, you said it fucked you a bit, but do you reckon that's a good thing? It's a good it? thing, but it's annoying because I'm like, I have to go fucking pick that up now. You know what I mean? Following on to that quote, though, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. What are your thoughts on that? Because if you're doing all the little things, it's probably going to mean you're going to show up more yeah, than everything exactly. else. That's the whole point. So <laughs> the, the fucking, what, what, what can't... You're just like, that's the whole point. Yeah. yeah. So... The reason uh, I bring that quote up is because when I first came into success, I stopped doing the little things and I fucking found myself in a pretty bad place and it was getting back to the foundation and fundamentals that got me to the dance that I had to keep doing to to make myself feel good every day because I started not putting the time I was into the gym, my health, how I looked. Just just those little things. I stopped doing them and... uh, It didn't work out well for me. And to get back, I got back to the foundations. And then that along with everything I'm doing is just the the ultimate combo. So you got to keep doing what got you to the dance. And what do you think is the reason that they drop off? Do you kind of get this level of success and go, oh shit, I've done done it. I've I've made this thing. I don't need to do all the stuff Mm. that got me there. Well, there's a big transition going from uh, working for yourself, doing all the jobs, not having staff, start your business starts building up it's overwhelming and then you might like then I started hiring staff I started having all this stuff going on and I gave away I gave up all the stuff that I was doing every day 
So then I'm sitting there going, what the fuck's going on here? Delegating why, why am tasks. I feeling? Why am I feeling empty? So I sort of lost my purpose. You just get caught up in it. It's a big transition. And then you might be too busy f- thinking that little shit doesn't matter, but it definitely matters. It sets the foundation for the day. And it's about having constant good days. And then that's a good life, right? If every day is good. Yeah. And in those moments when you were feeling like, fuck, I've lost the purpose, you've gained all this stuff, delegated all the tasks and everything that you would do throughout the day and you were sat there doing nothing or, or at least not doing nothing. Sat the thing. there thinking. Yeah. Like n- not motivated. I went through like times of – a big thing for me was I went through a toxic relationship when I was around 31. It was fucked. <laughs> it was absolutely fucked. It taught me the most though. I'm glad I went through it all. But it was weird. I was so caught up in it, so lost, felt – I've just come into success. I'm killing it. I've just bought this brand new apartment. One day I just get up. There's an auction on in 50 minutes. I just walk there. Bang, buy this apartment. I'm like, fuck, I've just bought a fucking $1.3 million apartment on the spot. And then, then fucking I'm sitting there in this toxic relationship thinking nothing means anything to me and getting out of that. Where, where were we going with this question? How did this start? <laughs> what was the well, original question? I, I wanted to know how you were feeling in that, in those. I lost all that. And it just wasn't me. And then coming out of that taught me so much about myself. And yeah, here we are today. What's toxic? Like when you say toxic, what does that mean? Like what, what were some of the things that were toxic about the relationship? Oh, that's a bit deep, but it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, oh, just the arguing, the anxiety, the stress, just constant, just you're no longer thinking about yourself. It's just all about, worrying about everything else around you. You lose that focus on yourself. Um, Yeah, it was like I was back in a 17-year-old relationship when I'm 31. After I've, like, I've been in relationships, I've been in healthy relationships, I've known when it wasn't working and I've been, like, mature enough to sit down and have that conversation and leave and move on. So prior to this one, I was so proud of the person I was doing that, transitioning from the, the shit you go through when you're younger into, like, okay, This isn't working. I'm going to be mature enough to cop the pain, have the conversation and move on with my life. And then I went from that into this thing. I'm going, holy fuck, what is going on here and why can't I get out? Mm. I felt trapped. I feel like a lot of people go through it because a lot of people ask me like, how do you, how have you been through breakups and been okay? Like, because they, that's what makes you. And then I was in it myself, hard to get out. And I did and it was great, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess you kind of get caught up in love, hey? Like love's yeah. one of those things where it just masks everything else. Well, I don't know if it was love. It was a f- constant battle of adrenaline and stress. And I maybe maybe you get like used to that feeling and you keep chasing it. Maybe you're getting dopamine hits through that and you don't realise. Yeah. Because then when it's not there, you're going, what the fuck's going on? But I think when you actually look at it, you go, there has to be some reason as to why you're staying. Like the thought of having to... I know what it is. What is it? I just didn't believe in myself at the time and I felt yeah. I felt I felt like I was worthless without it. And like you I couldn't was, get anyone better if you left it. I just felt like I don't know if I want anything else other than this. But there's just not believing and not respecting yourself. Not like even if it's hurt you even if it hurts to leave, you should know like I'm more than this, so I don't care about this temporary pain to get through it and i ended up doing that and it was the fucking best thing i ever did mm. <laughs> was there this level of just like relief though mm. just like mm. this feeling off your shoulders well at first it's this feeling of anxiety and then you sit in it and embrace it and i've learned to do that now so how long I'm did happy. that phase take three minutes nah, sitting in it for from three. when i accept <laughs> From when I accepted the it. The top C takes three minutes. Top C does what the fuck he wants. Three minutes is a long time for me. I was actually disappointed it took that long. No, nah, but seriously, for anyone going through that, like, it can t- it's different for everyone. Like, I've sat there and just embraced my emotions and it just gets better over time. There's no, like, t- I don't want to tell you how long it took me. 
I just want to let you know, if you're going through it, sit in it, feel it, and then get up when you're ready and start getting to work and working on yourself. That is the best thing you can do. And there's nothing wrong with feeling shit. Like you're supposed to, you got to remember that everything you're feeling, you're supposed to feel. And when I tell myself that I'm like, good, this is going to make me better because everything I've been through has made me better. And that's that. 100%. It's that thing, uh, Jocko Willink, this is a quote for you. Jocko Willink says, good with everything that yeah, happens. Yeah. Fucking everything good. Everything is good. Everything is good yeah. because what is the point of complaining about it and s- dwelling in it? You can't control that shit. It's happened. Mm. Fucking good. Yeah. And then also just understanding, and, and it's so important because you're saying if someone else is going through this, fucking everyone goes through this. But what you said earlier is heartbreak fucking shake, shapes mm. you. It, trans- it transforms you. And as you said, you went from that point there and just fucking used it as fuel and catapulted you forward. Mm. What did that look like when you started on that mend and you started, um, you know, investing back into you and your business? Well, mate, the second, the second you accept it and start working on yourself, it all goes away and you start feeling good. So for me, it was quick. It was like, all right, acceptance, bang, done, let's go, start working on yourself. I actually started to want to get up and go to the gym instead of dragging myself there. And I had this life about me and that was immediate. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep rolling with this momentum. But as you were saying, everything that happens is good. Everything is good. I'm sure for you, everything you've been through has got you here. And sometimes you go, fuck, thank God all that happened. Like I've had so much shit happen in my life and I just think, thank God. Because it's all those tough times that make it worth it when you get it all. And and also you kind of get to the sick point when you go through so much shit that when you go through more shit, you just laugh. Mm. I don't know if you get to that point, but it's like, it's either a comedy or a tragedy, mate. Like fucking shit's happened. Let's just yeah, laugh about yeah. it. And it kind of gets funny. But then also, as you said there, which is so important, is the fucking shit is what makes the good great. Mm, it's mm, like you need yeah. to have that time. Well, even three weeks ago, I snapped my ACL. And I remember just bang, sitting there going, oh, shit. And I, I remember telling myself, like, this is going to be good for me. Something good is going to come of this. And then immediately, like, we just started creating different content. And it just gave me a new little purpose with my content and my it blew my profile up more. So it's helped my business already snapping my ACL. And then I got to go through the surgery and like have that experience under my belt. And like now I get to show people when it happens, you don't have to be a little bitch. Just get up and keep going and keep doing what you can in this situation because I'm always talking about that. But now I get to show you I'm not just talking, I do it. So it's it's some good adversity to overcome. And I know maybe in a year from now, I might have a fight. I might do something that I probably wouldn't have done if this never happened and it'll be fucking great. Well, it's because you, are you saying that because you want to come back sh- stronger? Yeah. Yeah. And I want to, during the process, not sit there and be depressed about it. Like I've been happier since it happened. <laughs> Literally, hey, John, just smiling about it. Everyone's going, oh, it's going to be a mental battle, but it's not. Just because I'm like, it gives me something to do every day. I wake up. I've got a new little goal, work on this every day. And it's like those little things, if I do this every day, it gives me more momentum to go and work on everything that I'm doing. You know what it gives you as well, though, is just comparison. You're like, mm. fuck, how good is it to be able to walk normally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You walked in and you're oh. like, fuck this fucking leg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. Like, I think, how good would it be to throw a spin kick again? Um, just little things like going down the stairs. I'm like, fucking struggling but it's going to be great when it's back to full function. Now I've had my moments where I'm like, fuck, it's good to just, your health is so important. The second I did it, I'm like, fuck, nothing matters. Eh? If I was fucked now, it would just change my perspective on so many things for a long time. So. Yeah. you, but, And I guess you need to go the, through those things, but then the, also the lesson from that, and you can't control an ACL, but for most people, and this ties into even some of the people that you're probably attracting with your programs and stuff, is people wait to get sick so they look after their health. Mm. Like people wait till someone passes away before trying to prioritize spending time with them. Like people are waiting until they do it when you should be trying to maintain mm. all that, that stuff and have all the fundamentals going. Yeah. So you're not saying what if as opposed mm. to oh well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. But another thing I want to um I want to talk about is you've blown up and I've been itching to say this is like and I was speaking to t- Tim about this too cuz I was just going mate, I'm so intrigued by Adam 
Did you have a plan or are you just fucking winging it? Just winging it, brother. <laughs> I'm just a kid from Blacktown who showed up every day. Yeah. That's it. It's just wild <laughs> because I look at it and go, I don't know if you've like read any books or whatever, like 48 Laws of Power and, and, and understand some of the methodologies that are really famous and known, but like you just look at all the things that you've done with creating like the enemy and and having like the like these cr- raving fans but then like shit talking to other people and you're doing all of this stuff and I'm like, he could have planned this out like <laughs> Tate did and mastered it and <laughs> executed to a T. Or you're just like, fuck it, I'm just going to be me, wing it, and this is what's happened. Like, what was yeah, it yeah. for you? We will get back to speaking with the top C himself in just one minute. But first, I want to tell you about this thing that is on my wrist called a Whoop. It is the ultimate health and fitness tracker. It is a game changer when it comes to achieving my health and fitness goals. Now, if you actually go to the link in the description or the show notes below or go to join.whoop.com forward slash Chris, you can get a free one month trial of the Whoop to try out for yourself. Now, I did this last week and you guys absolutely love this, but I'm going to do it again this week. If anyone gets a Whoop in the first seven days of this episode airing, I'm going to be choosing one of you guys and you're going to be able to get another band, any color, any combination, whatever you like sent to your door as well. That's on me. So if anyone does decide to pick up a whoop in the first seven days of this one airing send me a screenshot of your confirmation and i'm going to be choosing one of you guys so if you send that to at more chris griffin my instagram page and i'll be selecting one of you guys to win an extra band sent straight to your door as well so you can try out whoop in style so without further ado let's get back into the episode with adam so i wish i was that smart but it's not how it works (laughs) but what i did do was take one step at a time and see opportunity and then roll with that. So it would have just started for me with I created some content and then I just kept showing up every day and doing that and then something stuck. So if I saw something work, I would double down on it and then I kept going with it and then I kept becoming more and more of myself over time and there's been opportunities that brings opportunity and it's up to you to see that and capitalise. So I think... I'm smart enough to see an opportunity and capitalise on it and that's been the difference. The other thing is I don't really give a fuck. I just show up every day and try and shut out all the external things like how many views did you get or how many sign-ups did you get to your program. Take all that shit away, show up and do follow your values every day and just do it because you want to do it without all the other shit and then everything else will take care of itself. So I've just sort of taken... Because it's hard when you're like, it's hard when you, one of the goals is how many views is this getting? And then a video that's completely you does shit. And then that might demotivate you, motivate you, whatever. But I'm like, if I just bring value to people every day, the rest is going to take care of itself. So that's something I follow. But then even with that, like, I I know the feeling as well. When you, when you, when you start blowing up and you start tying your, the success to the views and the signups and every, everything like that. It's kind of like, it's a, it's a direct feedback loop. It's like, mm. it's like, you know, okay, this is a video. Good. Did it go mm. well, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But another thing is we've been speaking about comparison a fair bit, but like you've been at this for fucking ages. Mm. Like how, how long, how long have you been a, a trainer for? I've been a trainer for, I started when I was 21. I'm 34 this year. So that's been a long while there. Yeah, I was face to face for about eight years. And even with that, I had the same mentality with work. Like I showed up every day, just kept the same grind, same. I was in the same little rut because I was just a grinder and I I wasn't seen. Got to the point where I'm like, fuck, I've been doing this for a long time and it's the same, same sequence of events happening. I'm getting busy and then... I'm so busy with all my face-to-face clients. I don't have time for the other stuff. And then it drops off and then I'm going, fuck, I need more clients. And it was just boom, boom, boom. Just that constant chase. And I thought, well, I need to do something different here. Or this is fucked. I'm starting to get a bit depressed now. (laughs) You're going to keep doing the same shit and get the same results. Exactly. And that's kind of, you're you're just going on this this loop and loop and going Mm. around in circles. Like this is John. He was one of my clients when I first started. He actually lost 30 kilos and... He went and opened his own gym and did all this stuff while I was still just doing the same thing. I remember telling him this. I was like, bro, I just feel like I'm I'm in the same cycle of going up and down and it's just the same constant grind and it's not going to not lead me anywhere. But I was just on my path. 
I was at uni doing exercise science. I was doing all the things I was doing. I just didn't get the payoff phase yet. So that's another thing. I was doing all the right things. It just wasn't my time yet. And then I stuck to my path. Instead of comparing like, oh, John's doing amazing. He owns his own gym. He's doing this. He started as one of my clients. Why am I just doing this? But thankfully I stuck to my path and I'm here now and I'm doing what no one's doing. So that that's good. If you've got a goal, I see a lot of people drop off, but the payoff phase doesn't come to that ninth, 10 year. If you look at like when you invest money in something and you look at the compounds in interest over time, it's like the first 25 years, right? In the last five years, you make like double what you would have in the first 25 years. It's that payoff phase at the end when it all makes sense. So I'm just thinking about this now as we talk about it because I'm like, fuck, I'm so glad I stayed on my path. Mm. I don't know if I've deviated from the question here. No, no, no. That's, I, that's, I tend to do that. That's great. <laughs> but but also the thing is, is and you're saying it might take nine or ten years, and for anyone listening, it's no, there's no time frame. Yeah. It just typically takes a yeah. fucking long time. You're banging at this, the yeah. axe at the gold, and you don't know where the gold mm. is, but it's up to you to keep going. And I can tell you another thing. It might never pay off and you have to be okay with that. I never knew it would pay off for me. It could have just, I just had nothing to fall back on, but I still showed up every day. You got to love the process and accept that you could do everything right and it might turn to shit and that's just how it is. And if you're willing to accept that and keep showing up, then maybe good things will happen. But I think as well on that is, I'm not sure if I agree with the fact that it might never pay off because if you are constantly making sure you're climbing the right ladder, mm -hmm. the thing might fucking fail. The business might fail, but like the journey, you're going to fucking succeed at some point. But I think by that, I mean, people look at my situation and my situation's a very unique one. So like you might follow what I'm doing and do everything right. There's probably 0.1% of people in my industry doing what I'm doing. And what I'm saying is I'm not the hardest worker. I work hard, but I'm sure other people are working harder and doing the right things and they're not in my position. So you will do I I'm sure you like if you're always grinding and doing the right doing the right things, it should work out well. But it might not just might not. it might not be something crazy, but that's okay. Well, Does that make sense? It's that what concept hundred percent. It's that concept around skill stacking as well though, because someone can copy you, do exactly what you're doing. But they might be, and this is just the reality, they might be not as good looking. They might not be as funny. They mm. might not have as good videos, mm. but they're still doing it, copying yeah. your frameworks. And it's like people don't resonate with you when they see your video. So yeah. it doesn't go well. Yeah. And so I guess it's like some people are going to have more of a gift of the gab with still skill stacking and combining mm. all of them. Like when you combine like the charisma and, and your funny nature, then you kind of have all the other little things going and then you get results with your clients and yeah. you've got this credibility there. Like it kind of is all these little pieces to the yeah, puzzle. Yeah. And like, I feel like I'm not trying to demotivate anyone by saying it might not work out. Like it's always going to work out if you're putting in the work. It's just like you have to have the right expectation. 100%. All I'm saying is keep showing up every day regardless of the outcome. Yeah. That's the purpose. That's the point of that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree with you with, with your, what you're saying. I think, I think people sometimes though are climbing the wrong ladder yeah. and they just keep chipping away at this thing because some mentor that yeah, that's has told them point something. To make. If you're in the wrong, if you're chasing the wrong thing, get the fuck out of there. hundred percent. Because yeah. then you bang your head at the wall for exactly. so long and you're in your mind, you're like, oh yeah, it's, it's always going to work. It's going to work. I just got to put in the effort. Mm -hmm. But then you kind of go, mate, you're climbing the wrong fucking yeah. ladder. Yeah. Well, that's like the thing with me being a PT. I was on the constant hustle, but it was capped. It was like a limit to where I could go with it. So, but it all taught me the right things I needed to be where I am now. So everything that happens is good. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And the thing that's crazy about that too is you fucking were doing it. Like you, you actually try and giving things a crack and through that you learn. Mm. Whereas some people will look at you now and go, okay, I'm just going to copy him. But it's, it's like they're going to step five mm. without doing one, two, three, and four. Yeah. And then they go, okay, why am I not getting the results like he is doing? I'm copying his, his blueprint, which I'm sure there'd be so many people copying you right now. Yeah. So you kind of, kind of go like, you need to have your own little unique twist, your own little place in the marketplace mm. 
and then stick at that. Make sure it's something that people want and provide good value and then the, the money and the business will come off the back yeah. of that. Would you agree? hundred percent. Like when I'm, when I'm talking, I've lived it. I've been through it all. Like everything I'm saying is through experience and that, that accumulated over such a long time. When anyone sees me talk about shit and it just pops off the top of my head, I'm not following what someone told me. I'm fi- I've lived it. And that's part of why I can do what I do today. When I make a video, I've, I've been a PT for 10 years, 13 years now, whatever. I've gone and done exercise science. I've gone and been through adversity and struggled. Like I've faced fears. I've been like I did a Muay Thai fight to like prove to myself like, I can fucking face anything. And all that experience has led me to the work ethic I have now, the ability to just be able to face something that scares me. And that's what you see here. When, you, when you're watching me on Instagram, it's, there's so, it's so deep to become the person I am. And it's like, oh, who's this cocky cunt? But it's like, well, I'm, I'm the way I am because of what I've been through. And if you knew that, you, would fucking, you wouldn't be questioning it. Yeah, and I guess in front of the camera you seem so – confident Mm. what are your thoughts on confidence and where does it stem from is it all the things you just said like by actually doing it stacking those Mm. proofs that you are who you say you are where does confidence come from well like the ability to be yourself and hold your hold your chest up hold your shoulders high is from your experience but also showing up and you need to be you need to be exposing yourself to that environment consistently the first time I talked in front of the camera, it didn't look anything like... It wasn't looking like it was now. There was no spin kicks. I was just... I'd be looking around my house when no one's in it, hoping no one saw what I just did. Like, I was... Growing up, I wasn't confident speaking. It's like your life experience and face and fears, that, that gives you that bit of confidence. And then it just gives you the ability to back yourself and then go do what you actually want to do. So then I started filming myself in front of the camera then over time the next step was doing it in front of someone so my ex-girlfriend started holding the camera for me I remember I used to make her leave the house for me to film a video I'm like oh fuck this is so cringe then we like started going to the shops and she's holding the camera and she would be like come on you can do this it's just the same shit you do every day just a different environment and then I started filming and people are walking past I started not caring and then that's like it's just one step after the other. That's the same way I've built a business or built anything I've done. It just starts like, like a taking a little step up over time, challenging yourself with enough stimulus that you can handle it, but not too much that you go, this is fucked, I'm out. And it's that constant build up over time. So now even Riley sees me talking in front of the camera, he's like, fuck, you just don't care when you're talking in front of everyone. I'm like, I don't even know that's happening. It's like us having a conversation right now is the exact same I feel when I talk in front of the camera and that comes from exposing yourself to that environment and consistently challenging, challenging yourself over time. Uh, yeah. And so if you see me thinking I'm confident, it, it didn't start like that. I learned that over time. Yeah. And you get messages all the time. I do. And you would definitely, you probably don't see them, but you would definitely get people all the time. Oh, you're just lucky that you're confident in front of camera. Mm. It's like, mate, have you fucking seen, look how many posts I've made. Like, have you seen how many times I've fucking showed up? And they're the ones that have actually made it to the Mm -hmm. fucking Instagram. What about all the attempts, all the fails, all the times where the bloopers where you're like, fuck, how can I not say the simple sentence? And all of those little things are part of the iceberg that's below the water that no one fucking sees. All of those things is what make you how you are Mm. in front of camera and make you show up. Yeah, it's funny. Someone messaged me when I put up some bloopers. They're like, oh, fuck, it's crazy that you fuck up still. I'm like, just so you know, guys, I'm not, I'm not like some amazing, highly skilled motherfucker. It might look like it, but I make probably more mistakes than you do. Every time I film, I might stutter. I might, I, there's sentences I can't say and, and they're so simple. That happens every time. And it's, that doesn't matter. It's about what the end product look like, looks like. So if you're out there, thinking, oh, I'm, I suck at making content because I'm making mistakes. You, you should be making mistakes. That's normal. Mm. Just focus on the end product. And you mentioned when you were building that up, you had your girlfriend start to film you and it had this slow progression of going, okay, I don't want to even want you in the house. And then, mm. then she, you might have filmed when she was in the house and then all of a sudden she's behind the camera filming you. 
I'm sensing like, and then you were saying that she was like kind of cheering you on. And, like, mm. yeah, it's all good. Like if you're doing this or whatever, mm. you you mentioned a little bit about relationships, how someone was toxic, but then you're also saying stuff like this, which sounds mm. like she was really supportive. Yeah. Like how important do you think when you were growing and blowing up, how important was the relationship in that moment? Do you think? If you were to look at it. Or you like what do you mean? Just like, like, like you, you said a bad thing <laughs> about the relationship. You were just saying like I was in something toxic. That, this is a different different relationship, relationship. altogether. By okay, the way, yeah. okay. Nah, like she played a big role in my growth. Like, yeah. this was around the time I first started blowing up too, and yeah, like her, like I obviously had to feel comfortable with her to do that, and that everything that happens is good. Yeah, and um. I don't know what what to say about this. Yeah, no, that's 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 fine. I just think there's there's sometimes as uh, we're talking about there's good, there's good and bad with yeah. absolutely everything that we do. Mm. And I think it's cool to look at like when we talk about breakups and when they, how much they fuck you up. There's so much positive to it, mm. and as you say, you're like after that, I just turned into an absolute beast mm. with with every breakup. But like you kind of look at it and go, it's so easy to just see oh, that was fucked, let's move on, use that as fuel. But there's always goods and everything. And when I'm yeah. just hearing you say like... Oh. Well, like with that relationship, it was great. It wasn't toxic. We had our little moments, but I think we just, we were just, it was the wrong timing. And so we, we made the decision that like, all right, we're not getting what what we need from this, but we're still friends, we're mature. We had the conversation and we moved on. It was hard, but like... Yeah. When you were with yeah, her, she played such an important role in my growth, and like she was there supporting me, filming for me, doing whatever I needed. And then that's also another part. Like I was also so focused on what I was doing during this time. So like, because I'm such a fucking, if I'm doing something, I'm doing it. Nothing's getting in my way. So that could have also had a bit of a negative effect on the re relationship. But it's all lessons we learn from, and you know, I'll take that for whatever happens in the future. Mm. And then let's talk about like in those moments or before the relationship, during relationships, after relationships, let's tie this into like partying and finding yourself drinking and going through different phases like that. Did you find they were enhanced in certain moments? And if so, when? Well, actually, after that relationship, I took a time where I didn't drink. That was good. I can't believe I did that, to be honest. Straight after. Um, after I'd cruised in, obviously, you know how it is. You don't mind going out and getting blind after a breakup. <laughs> I tried not to do that because one of the biggest things is you think you're good and then you go get blinds and whatever happens, then you're sitting there depressed for three days going, what have I done? So <laughs> if you're fresh out of a relationship, don't do that. I actually held off for a couple of weeks after that uh, breakup before I went and did anything like that. Actually, maybe I didn't. <laughs> that might be a lie. But I I didn't go too hard. Um, and what happened was each week, because when I'm going out now, I can do whatever I want. There's no cap on how much money I can spend that night. I get a lot of attention. It's pretty crazy. It's It gives you a fucking good dopamine release, if I'm being honest. So I found myself just loving going out because I was having so much fun with all the boys which is you just got no care in the world and it started accumulating each weekend so it might have got a I was getting a bit deeper and deeper into it and then I'm like fuck this is maybe affecting what I actually want to do this isn't really aligning with my values right now I don't want to be hung over every fucking Sunday and be missing out on seeing the day and stuff like that so um from mid-December, I took a break from drinking. I cut out everything and I did 14 weeks straight. And that's like, that was good for me because being on my own and not being dependent on the weekend and going out partying to find this rush, I was like, wow, I fucking really matured by not seeking external validation here, just sitting and being by myself and being content without anything else. So that taught me a lot. It taught me that that shit didn't control me. And it's that's I'm doing that when everyone's asking me to come out, everyone wants me to have a drink, I can afford to do whatever I want and I'm like, I'm just free. So that was a good little experience for me. That's just remind, what I find is because 
like I know you're not big on all these different challenges, like like fucking seventy five hard and all this stuff. Um, but I find doing something like that where you go all extreme, like when I did seventy five hard, for example, um, the main lesson I learned from it is just like I'm in control. Mm. Like I I know what I, I know what can happen if I go all in for two and a half months. Yeah. Like when I did it, the two and a half months. I got more done than in fucking the nine months post that because I yeah. sent it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. happens, right? You go on these big yeah. things and and, th- and that's another lesson learned. But then at the same time you go, I'm in can fucking troll. Mm. And that's why when you did 13 weeks off or whatever it was, like you would find yourself just feeling like, fuck yeah. Like mm. I can just, I know I can switch it on and switch it off. Yeah. And in those 13 weeks, did you get like some good results? Shit was happening. Yeah, just showing up every day. Content was booming. Uh, training every day. Like just following a great routine, I had a good sleep routine. That none of that shit got interfered with. So I just felt like energized to get shit done every day, and I was just happy. Like with simple things, waking up early, getting out, going for walks on the weekend, just all that was great. But to be honest, I feel like maybe it was too extreme for me because I like drinking, I like socializing, so I still want to do that. And then when I came back, I fucking sent it, of course. And now I'm re-establishing the right balance. I don't want to not drink. Like on Friday, I felt the urge like I want to drink, but I didn't. I was like, I shouldn't. And then I went, oh, what if I just go for a few and then fuck off home? And so there was a better balance. And we're all still trying to figure it out, you know. That few's a hard one to draw the line though. Mm. That but, two but to but four range. But if you just don't fight it, I don't mind having six, eight drinks when I go out and just going home, getting getting home early. It's when you go, I'm not doing anything. Next minute, you're on a fucking big bender. Mm. Don't cut that part out. I don't do that. I'm just saying for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then also you have um, like the fucking mental the next day. This mm. is the thing I remember when I went through a breakup. One of my mentors said, he said, "Don't go and send it. Don't sleep with other girls." And um, he's like, don't go and send it. Don't sleep with other girls and don't uh, slack off your training. He just yeah. said like d- those three things. And I was like, don't sleep with other girls. Isn't that what you're supposed to do after a breakup? And it's just, I think it comes down to that mental thing. Like when you drink and you wake up the next morning and you're fucked and you just feel like a piece of shit, lonely, like all those things, just yeah. try and reduce those feelings yeah. when you're going through a breakup. Yeah, they'll all be reduced if you're not out fucking sculling drinks and shit, but just remember everything that happens is a good lesson. hundred <laughs> is good and bad with everything, everything mate. Everything is good. No, I think, I think, I think there's just certain things that are making your life harder when mm. you're going through like breakup or different heart, like, okay, like business, um, business is going really well. Let's celebrate. Mm. Business is going shit. I feel like shit. Let's celebrate. Let, let, let's just go get on the drink anyway. It's kind of like a, where do you draw the line? Like you're going through a hard time. I'm going to drink. You celebrate. I'm going to drink. And then mm. it kind of just fucks you up either way. I think one of the most important things after a breakup is like stay aligned with your values. Don't go and do shit that isn't really you and who you want to be. So I think that's important because there's no right or wrong of what you should do when you break up with someone. If you want to go sleep with other girls, go do it. That might be someone's goal. That's fine. It's not wrong. If you want to drink, go drink, but stay in check and do do what aligns with your values. You know what I think makes it hard for people though is when they don't have like something to strive towards. Mm. Like if you've got like, you have so much shit that you're striving towards and trying to achieve and you're getting after. So when you go through a breakup, it's like, fuck, this is just fuel and I know where to use that fuel. Whereas people don't have anything. And it's yeah. like when people are sleeping in bed all day, not doing shit, I kind of don't blame them sometimes because they yeah. go, mate, you f- you don't have anything to strive towards. Yeah. It's like, what, where's the drive going to come from? Oh, even for me, like I've got shit to strive towards and I go to the fucking opposite. Yeah. Uh, I've gone and done the opposite stuff of what's going to get me there. And then I destroy myself for it. I'm thinking you, I'm so hard on myself, but I always pull myself back together and get back on the train, you know? And that's, so people are going to watch and be like, oh yeah, just follow your values. Well, it doesn't always work that way. Like you're going to yeah. fuck up, but everything yeah. is good. We're all, <laughs> as we're, long as you get back. Yeah, we're, we're all human. But also the thing is, is it's a different story if you, you've got things to strive towards, but you're also not, your back's not against the wall right now. Yeah. Like, like and, and so I guess kind of if you had nothing and you have things to strive towards and then you go and send it, it's like you've got a bit more responsibility 
to like, well, not responsibility, but like you've kind of got a bit more that you need to run away from in a mm, sense. Mm. Would you say most of your drive is coming from not running away from pain, but striving towards certain pleasures? Mm. Like my drive to go every day? Yeah, your drive just to, to work and keep leveling up. I think one of my biggest motivators is never going back to where I came from. So whatever category you want to put that under, am I avoiding pain? Am I, am I, am I avoiding the pain of where I came from? I don't know, mm. but I just remember my life before and everything I've done to get to where I am now. And I think I've got to keep going to never go back. Mm. So. Mm. Fair enough. I'm just trying to think like, yeah. that's one motivator. It's it's just hard because as a PT, right, you're hustling every day and if you just fuck up a little bit and miss a day, you'd see an instant drop off in clients. You'd get messages, shit goes wrong. I remember if I ever had a big weekend, then I wake up, I've got five messages, like I can't train in, train anymore because I've not been as responsive. And then you like directly associate how hard you work with the outcome. So... I kept that mentality going into this business and then I built up all this success and I'm thinking, fuck, I can't stop or fuck up in any way or I'll lose it all. So I'd keep going every day to never go back. And I don't know, I treat every day like it's day one. Mm. I like that. And you keep saying like you've m mentioned a few times about where you grew up, Blacktown in Western Sydney. It's funny, I lived in Sydney the last four years. I was living there, just moved back a few months ago saying that and then you're also saying like I don't want to go back to where I used to be talk to me about let, let's strip it right back and go go to childhood and mm. um talk to me about you growing up as a young kid how were you and how was how was how was your life as a young kid yeah well it was just normal at the time I just in comparison yeah. to what you knew though I guess mm. like yeah like looking back now I'm like holy fuck like look at my life this is unbelievable but the whole time up you just think it's all normal everything that's happened is just normal um, as a kid, like I was naturally talented. I was like a fast runner and good at footy. This is prior to anyone hitting puberty and shit like that. Right. So they used to call me speed cause I was that quick and agile on the field. If we wanted to score, just give me the ball. So I was pretty popular for those reasons in primary school. And what happened was over time, everyone hit puberty, but I didn't. <laughs> so then it just comes to a year with footy where you've, you've had the off season, you come back and cunts have beards now. And you're like, what the fuck? And I was just getting crunched. And then I realized these, these big dudes that used to be so faster than me now. And what happened was I was never the guy that was taught to push through shit like that because I was just naturally talented. So the coaches didn't pay attention to me. And all the other kids in the team got taught these life lessons like, oh, it's all right if you, you get pushed down, you get back up, you keep going or like, They've really worked on their, the mental side of all this with all these other guys and I'm just the guy that was sweet. And then all of a sudden I was like, I suck, I quit. Do you know what I mean? Did you quit? Quit. I was like, this. I'm just getting fucked up every How game. How old were I'm you then? Done. 14. You quit footy at 14. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm done. I'd, I'd be so nervous to play because these cunts were men. This is part of me going and doing Muay Thai and overcoming like the feeling of being weak. Like I saw Inferior. myself as weak. I thought, thought of myself as someone that avoided hard situations and I this was me overcoming it. But because in Blacktown, man, I used to like have to run away from people all the time. I'd get bullied. Not that it mattered, like it's all good. I wasn't like, oh, I've been bullied in my life. Like, yeah, whatever. It's just a standard part of going to school every day was just just a battle like that. <laughs> everyone bullied everyone, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a tough world. <laughs> Wait, you, so you've you got to be mentally strong to get through all this. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think, like it's, it, I know it's the whole like woe is me thing, but at the same time, like like not everyone did get bullied. Yeah. And I can imagine what would have happened was you wouldn't have been bullied. You you were probably the bully when you were 13 or 14 maybe. Nah. Oh, no, no, I actually wasn't. No, you were, yeah. No, nah, I'm but, not but, about that shit. Yeah, but then, but then like you might not have got picked on when you were the, mm. the cool yeah, kid, exactly. you know? And then what happened though is you didn't hit puberty when everyone else yeah. did and did you start getting picked on there? Yeah, because I remember my voice didn't change till um, I was a bit older. So there was that time where I just got destroyed daily right. for the voice. When are your balls going to drop? That was the biggest one. 
That was a tough one to get through. Jeez, and they still haven't. Yeah, I know. I'm still <laughs> waiting to hit puberty. <laughs> that, that's great. And that's one thing you can't buy. <laughs> <laughs> but then you said you were running away from people. What, like in the streets or in school? Yeah, just run away from people that want you, <laughs> want your fucking five bucks you got in your pocket. Fuck, that happened. Yeah, all the time. That's normal, but but we were little smart asses too. So like when we got, we were fast, so we'll just be like, "Oi, fuck you!" Like when we're in the distance, knowing they couldn't catch us. Yeah, we'll be sitting on the train and like people block off each side and just come through. I'm lucky I never got any shit taken off me, but heaps of my mates did. But I was a good little escape artist. So you'd say it on the train to people? No, no, no. On the train, you sit there. Yeah, stiff. Yeah. And then when the door unlocks, you go "fuck you," and then you yeah. run. <laughs> what? Yeah, we would just do whatever. We were just little menaces roaming the street. Right. You get good at like um, awareness. Said, yeah, you become aware of situations, and you can see it, see it from a mile away, and avoid it. Yeah. Like I wasn't some guy that just got in punch ons. Like I didn't like it. Every now and then it would happen, but like I would always try and avoid conflict like that. It wasn't about it. You see, I think it, it's interesting because you keep coming back to it's normal. This is normal. But it must be normal in like those areas mm. because like like it wasn't normal where I went to school and stuff. So I kind of look at it and go the environment that you're in becomes normal mm. because you don't know any other, any mm. anything else. When I moved to the Gold Coast, I was like, wow, I can walk at the streets at night. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Like it's something might have, probably going to happen if you do that. Yeah, well, <laughs> I used to go out to Blacktown and sell alcohol for Fisher's brand back oh, in the yeah. day, Fizz, and I would drive out there, I was living in Pondi, and I'd drive out to Blacktown and I'm like, fuck, do I need to put a knife in my sock? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not, they'll just take it off you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's crazy, dude. And you had brothers, you mentioned you slipped up and said something wrong about your brothers on, on, on another podcast or something, mm. but um, you had brothers, are they older? Three older brothers. So you're the youngest. Yeah. Yep. yep. No sisters. No sisters. Three older brothers. And were that? What were they like for an influence for you? Um, they were they were funny, but they they're like leaders, but they're leaders in the wrong thing. Right. Like the guy above me, my brother that's just above me. I don't know what he's doing now, but he got caught up in drugs. He's still still doing that. Like he went to juvie when we were sixteen for three arm robberies. <laughs> Your brother did. Yeah. Right, just the one above you, or yeah, all of the them? one above me. Right, so, so three armed robberies. <laughs> That's the sort of shit this guy was doing. He, I don't know what happened along the way for him to be doing that because I guess like our parents got divorced at a certain age. To me, I wasn't old enough to really understand. Maybe it affected him. I don't know, but he was the funniest, most charismatic guy I knew. Still, like, I don't know what he's doing at the moment, but like, not long ago, he's just when he comes up and you're around him, he's like literally me, but like maybe more. He's funnier than me. You know what I mean? He He's like a character. He would say the funniest shit, um, but he just went down the wrong path and uh, he got deeper and deeper in it. And I think he's at the point now where you don't come back, right. but, uh, but I hope he's all good. So you're not in contact with him anymore? Well, he goes off the rails every now and then you might hear from him. He'll be like, I need help. Same cycle. It's been happening for 10 years now. Yeah, wow. Mm. Wow. So just just goes cold, gnaws, comes back. Like I literally had to send him money the last time I spoke to him because someone was like going to kill him. He's like, this guy's going to kill me if I don't pay him. Sweet. Here's the money. Don't do it again. Silly cunt. And then he's probably going to do it again. He'll do it again. Yeah, right. Same shit. It's hard to get out of. Like I, I feel for him because he. I remember he was six months clean and then he goes, I had the one thought, bang, I was back on back on the ice mm. like literally he was six months clean saved like 20 grand working hard every day had a thought bang and he's straight back relapse yep it's it's like that as well hey and um because one of my friends uh well one of my friends dad got not ice but cocaine was really addicted to it and the come down of it is like the worst pain apparently yeah. and, and and so like so um he went to rehab and apparently because in rehab you're so monitored when you're that addicted and you're having it all day and you have to try and get off it the pain of being off it and that feeling you'd rather kill yourself yeah, than yeah, do yeah. it 
for sure. So, so like, but when you're in rehab, you can't, you can't not because they're monitoring you 24 mm, seven. Mm. And so then, but then he got out and was six months clean. And then he had one fight with his wife and then he just had one little line and then he went full down again. Yeah. But then now this time it's like, how, it's like you can't get him back in rehab because you know how fucked it was for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you kind of go on these big cycles. But so your brother is just going back. And f- has that played a role in you? Like, is there a motivation coming from that? Or is that like, what's... That's sad, man. Yeah. Like, because I remember a time where my whole family was together on a holiday having the best time. And like some shit happened after that. And then he got deeper everyone taking the wrong path and conflicts between my brothers. I was like, wow, we're never going to all be like that again. And that shit. Like another thing with those guys is, well, they used to do bad shit and I would look at it and be like, that's fucked. Like, how are you just doing that? And I always chose to do good. There was times where I was mo- like, I was influenced by them and I was doing silly shit, but I wouldn't feel right. And then I'd just go back to trying to do the right thing every day. So I am I was just different to them. I wonder where that comes from, though. Like, Yeah, I feel like he was just born that way, eh? <laughs> I, <laughs> or he just didn't... Because he just didn't have... Believe in the direction he could go. Were you exposed to anyone that was doing good shit? And no you one. looked up to them? But what actually happened is my oldest brother is an exercise physiologist and he left Sydney and moved to the Gold Coast. And I hadn't spoke to him for a while. And then I came up on a holiday to visit him and he was doing well. I'm like, holy shit. He's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. I'm like, what do you mean? What do you mean? He's like, but if you want to do something, you can go do it. Like, Cause I wanted to be a PT. He's like, yeah, easy. I'm like, what do you mean? That's crazy. I couldn't be a PT. And he sort of, sort of like put that thought in my head and showed me that if you want to do something, you can do it. Cause he had gone and done exercise science and he was like, I'm the dumbest cunt there is. You can do it easy. Because I'm like, there's no way I could go to uni. And like, then I, then I did become a PT and I did start backing myself and doing all the things I wanted to be doing. Then in my head, I was like, I can do whatever I want. And it's not going to be easy, but I can go do it. I was actually an RPM instructor and a body combat instructor. And like doing all those courses coming from a shy What's guy. RPM? The spin classes. I was in the front of the class fucking going crazy, brother. <laughs> it was like literally like my videos now, hey. Um, that's when I'm 21 and I've come from a shy dude that had no belief in himself to now going and doing this course with all this, these fit people. And I'm like, now I'm instructing a class, talking in front of 40 people and the classes were getting fully booked out and shit when I was taking them. Like it was good. Even though it's cringe to look back on, that stuff taught me so many lessons that I use today. Like I got the ability to be able to talk in front of a big crowd. I was doing that every day back then, just doing classes. And to go from a kid that had no confidence in himself, didn't really back himself to now I'm taking these classes, it's going off, I'm getting paid to do it. Yeah. Mm. So you did get exposed then to someone doing good stuff. Your brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you came to the Gold Coast to visit him, were you in a bit of a down, a dark place when you came to the Gold Coast? Like, were you like getting into some shit? In no, nah, I was actually, I'd been through that. Some shit happened. I had to go to court for something. After that, I was like, I'm never going back to court. And I was focusing on training. I'd really focus on my training nutrition. I worked in a bottle shop. So that's all I did. And I just used to watch motivational videos on the computer every day of like fitness people just talking. I'm G'ing up. I'm like, all right, let's go to the gym. I used to get super excited from that shit. So when I saw my brother, I was already heavily into the gym. I was consistent with working. I was like a two IC in the bottle shop. <laughs> I was still working on progressing at least. Like I was, I had a job in the bottle shop. It's all I thought I could do. So I was working my way up that, focused on progress. And uh, so when I moved up, I was very positive and happy with my life anyway. And then I, but when I came here, I wanted more. I wasn't really doing the things I wanted to do. I thought the way it is, is just the way it's going to stay. And then seeing my brother and seeing the things he had done, I was like, no, I'm not living like this. Because I'd see how good his life was and how happy he was. 
And then I would fuck off to work for on the weekend. So I would miss out on all this stuff. I'd be in the bottle shop all Saturday. Everyone's coming in. They're all going out, drinking, having a mad time. And I'm just sitting there. I'd see that every day and be like, fuck, I'd love to have a job where I didn't have to work on the weekends. So I was pretty positive the whole time through because when you're progressing, you feel good. And then I was like, all right, now I'm at a point where I've got to actually go do the shit I want to do. And then that's when I'm like, fuck this, I'm done with the bottle shop, I'm becoming a PT. Yeah, and, and it's funny, I think the people that don't get out of that hole and take that step and level up are the ones that are never exposed to it. And that's mm. what I was saying earlier about like, did you get exposed to it? Because it was for me as well, I wasn't in a dark place, but I was just this cool kid fuckwit at school that was captain of the footy team. <laughs> and and like everyone- You're like, the cunt that bullied me. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Uh, no bully. <laughs> I actually, it's funny, I used to work at Hungry Jack's and I would, I would- I think I spoke about this a couple of podcasts ago, but I would like the the manager would pick on all the fucking, yeah. and I would stick up for all the other people that would get picked on. I was yeah. like, "Fuck that guy! I, that yeah. manager he has an authority problem." Yeah, bro. just like a school teacher. And I was like, "Fuck that guy for picking on everyone." Yeah, well, I was just saying on my YouTube the other day when I worked in the bottle shop. The area manager was such a fucking bully. You work at like a liquor land or a BWS? BWS. And I worked at the one in Duneside, savage place. But um, the, just the managers, the way they would treat me, I'm like, fuck. When I look back now, I'm earning, I would be earning a hundred times what they were earning and I would never treat anyone that way. Yeah. So I just said on my YouTube. It's an authority problem. And that's a lot of the people go into jobs like that, I think. Because they, they just feel like they need to have this chip on their shoulder. And, mm. and, I, and I notice it so much and I, I hated that stuff. Mm. But what oh, else? Oh, yeah, but you don't have to demand respect out of someone. Like you, you earn it through your actions. 100%. And so they, like, they feel the need to give you authority. You mm, don't need mm. to press it and drill it yeah. down into them like school teachers might do and yeah. create this divide or mm. managers or whoever. Like you should be like building people up and having a positive impact on them and naturally you will have their respect. Like now I look back. And I have no respect for these guys that treated me that way. But I do remember the managers I had that were such good people to me and a positive influence on my life. I could have a conversation with them and they would build me up. And now I'm here where I am. I have all the time in the world for those people. And that's the same with teachers as well. Like the nice teachers, you yeah. have all the time for them, the world mm, for them. But mm. then for someone that was getting mad at you for not learning about Mick Beth properly, mm, mm. you're like, well, fuck that <laughs> teacher. But but yeah, I, I think being exposed to it, there's so many people that never get exposed and that's why they keep doing it. Because as you mm. said, we've been talking about this for the whole time. It was just, it's just normal. Mm. And so when you get exposed to it, because what happened with me was I was injured playing footy. I broke my, I pulled my hamstring. And I was in rehab and one of these guys that was the weird guy on the footy team that no one liked. He asked all the questions and you're like, you're like, shut up, mate. Um, <laughs> that guy was in rehab too. And he started telling me about business and all these people that were making all this money and stuff. And, and I just was drawn to it straight away. And then from that, it's like switch overnight. You have the belief that it's yeah. possible. And then you just go, fuck yeah, that's what I want. Yeah. And I can do it. Yeah. So once you believe... Then, then you can actually go do things and then you do a few things and it really fucking builds your confidence when you actually go, take the steps. Fuck, I can do that. I'm scared to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then it was successful. And then you're like, Whoa, let's go again and again and again. That's what I've been doing for the last 13 years. But then you also have times where it's, it's not successful, but you're successful, but you're a little bit better. Yeah. And you keep getting a little bit better and you look back and you go, holy shit, like, like I'm actually day and night mm. difference. Mm. And then you go, oh, all these people have succeeded. So you have this confidence that it's possible. Mm. It's like, I just got to keep fucking going. The, the actual times where it doesn't work out are probably the most important times. Because they force you to actually look within. Whereas mm. if, if it's all success and you go, oh, fuck, everything yeah, was yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, like you will look back and I think everything was perfect now. Yeah. But then when I look back, I go, fuck, I went through some times. Yeah. So everything is good. <laughs> everything is good. But then you said that there was this time when you went on a family holiday and it was fucking awesome. You had all the family together. Everything was was great. And then something shit went down and it fell out. And then you said that it started shit hitting the fan. And there was this heads budding with all the family, with mum and siblings and mm, all the rest mm. of it. Like, how were you feeling in, in those times when it was just going? You're like, fuck me. Just carry on. Yeah. Just carry on. No emotion. <laughs> really? 
Yeah, just fucking bury it. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nah, I'm joking, <laughs> mate. <laughs> probably to be I honest, wasn't I just surprised. Said, I wasn't. Nah, to be honest, yeah, just fucking get up and keep going with what I want to do. And yeah. now I can help. Like I'll tell you a story. My nephew, he's 17 now. My brother that's addicted to drugs didn't raise him. My dad did because my brother couldn't be there. But then the mum wasn't wasn't a drug addict or anything, but she went out one night, took like a pill, died. So my nephew's three and his mum's died and I watched my dad say it to him. I was like, well, that broke my heart. And when I, when I um, moved from Sydney to the Gold Coast, I used to hang out with my nephew a lot. Like I'd drive him around. And I remember turning to him saying, I'm going to the Gold Coast. And he didn't reply. And I look back. He's like, I'm not talking to you. It's a three-year-old. But I just knew his life was fucked. What was the question? Because this is related to something. It's just so, how, you, how you're how you feeling okay, when all yeah, the shit yeah. at the fan. So part of like one of the hardest things is like watching my nephew and knowing what he went through. And leaving, the, leaving Sydney at the Gold Coast, leaving him behind was one of the hardest things. So that's one thing I think about. And now, like, he's a good kid and I, I want to give him everything. I want to give him opportunity. But I also think you got to go through it, brother. So he's, he's like, doing an apprenticeship at the moment. Like, I'd love him to move here or, like, anytime he needs anything, I want to give it to him. But the other part of me goes, like, fuck, you got to go get it. Um, so thinking about all the shit that went down, like, Everyone, like everyone's old enough to make their own decisions. So I don't really, I'm not going to sit there and dwell on like if someone's fucked up and like they're in a bad situation now, it's not right, my responsibility. Like I love my brothers, but love all my family, but we all got to look after ourselves at the end of the day. I can't fix you. Any time I try to fix you, it's probably worse for you. That's what I think too. So I just focus on my shit. Now I'm in a situation where I can help and I'm just going to do the best I can to help in the right way. I'm just going to give. I'm going to be like, I'm going to teach you lessons to get out. And if you don't want to learn lessons, then you don't get it. Yeah. That's my mindset. It's, 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 it might be a ruthless mindset, but I know what I had to do to get to where I am. And I know if you just give, it doesn't help. It's the, be it's the best. I think it's the best mindset you can mm. possibly have. Yeah. It's the same with parenting. Mm. You kind of go, you kind of go, I can give my kid the world. I can give him anything I want. But if I give my son everything, and his first car is a brand new Rolls Royce and yeah. he gets, picks up his kids and the, uh, his friends and his mates go, oh, nice car, man. You, and he goes, yeah, it's all right because yeah, that's yeah. his normal. Yeah. You kind of go, how are you supposed – if you look at all the characteristics that are attractive in a man and you fucking give them everything, do you reckon they'll have those characteristics? Yeah. Probably not. Be the worst. How are you going to hold your head high if you were just gifted? You know what yeah, I mean? 100%. Like, that's why I say the struggle is what makes it worth it. Yeah. The struggle is the fucking story. Yeah. That's the best part. Yeah, hundred percent. And I went on a, um, I went on a, like a retreat with this this guy Rick Cowley, and one of the people on the on the retreat, we had to write down like what about what are our biggest things like like things that play on our mind a lot. And this guy has been kind of like given everything, for, like in terms of job, house, like all this stuff from his his family. And his biggest thing was, I feel like I. I just feel like I'm given everything and I do, and, he, and that's the thing that plays on his mind. I don't feel deserving of every, anything I have. Mm. And I go, fuck, imagine like making someone, like your yeah. parent, the parents are trying to do good, but they're actually doing a horrible thing. But because we just, our default is fix, 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 mm. fix. It actually makes it worse for people. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Some people might just be happy with that and that's all good. And then it might fuck someone up in a certain way where they don't feel like they've earned anything and, you ask them questions about what they're doing, they're probably, like, embarrassed. Like, I know for me, the best thing that happened was I was born the way I was and I built into what I am now. I'm, like, I'm so proud of that. I'm so thankful that that's how my life went. But during on the way up, you start you think, oh, these guys are so lucky that have everything. And now I'm, like, no, they're not. I'm the lucky one that got to do this. <laughs> It's, it's, how, it's how it works. It's a common story, but I think you have to go through it to learn that mm. story too because yeah, yeah. I'm feeling, I'm thinking the same. I'm sure there's a bunch of other people thinking the same too. But yeah, I, I think those those times where you're kind of going like, fuck, everything is hectic, like divides in family, all this stuff, and you kind of, your back's against the wall and you're like, fuck, what I got to lose? Let's just go for mm. it. And those are kind of the times that, that are pivotal and they just change things for you. Mm. Yeah. 
And um, in terms of the relationship with your mum, you bought her a home recently, yeah. which is awesome. Like, how does that feel and how's your relationship and how important is that for you? Yeah, so me and my mum didn't always have the best relationship. Actually, growing up, uh, I had a stepdad that was a fucking abusive cunt. <laughs> should probably say that in a better way. My stepdad wasn't the best to me or my mum. And that was real rough growing up with that. Like I used to live my life with anxiety in the house. Shit was always chaos. There was always something crazy happening. He was like mostly verbal, verb, verbally abusive, you know. But he would make me feel unsafe and he made me feel like I couldn't protect my mum. And there was nothing I could do about it because I was so young. And... um. Later in life, I resented mum for that. So, like, when I moved away, I'd go to call her and I'd be like, oh, fuck it. I just, I just remember I used to drive and I'd be sitting in my head without even knowing, so angry. I'm just driving along thinking about that. And I just wouldn't speak to my mum very often. And then as I got older, I thought, look, he died. And when he died, it, like, I felt so happy for her. <laughs> this might sound bad, but fuck. So they were together and he passed away. Yeah. yeah. She didn't want to be in it, but she couldn't leave. Right. She never felt like she could leave. And I used to think, I don't want to be like that. And I I wanted to, I couldn't do anything to help her at the time. And it's like her choice. So I just separated myself from that. I lived here. I just turned a blind eye to whatever was going on. Because like you can end up, things got pretty bad. Like there was a time where like we would punch on and shit and like it didn't, I don't know if I should say this on here. Like yeah, one time I threw him and he had a heart attack and then he survived. But like, that's the sort of shit, that's the daily shit that was happening. And I th started thinking, why did my mum stay with this guy and have us in this situation? And I'm thinking, what if I full on, because in my head I was like, I just want to protect my mum. And like, why am I letting someone bully me like this? And I feel, you know, I feel helpless and weak. And that's the, that, that was part to do with doing the Muay Thai fight and doing all that stuff is like letting go. And my mum was there watching and she was supportive. Like then when he died, me and my mum had a really good relationship and I was going to visit her and she's like, oh, can I bring this guy, my new boyfriend? And I just hung up. And I didn't even know I had this resentment or anything like that. I just didn't speak to her for like six months. And I didn't know why. I was just like, fuck this. I don't want to be introduced to anyone after what I've been through. I'm like, how are you even saying that to me? And she doesn't understand that. So part of you has to just like accept that what's happened isn't what is now. And like this new guy, he could just be a great guy that's like loves my mum. But in my head, I'm going, I'm thinking about everything that's happened. But one day I go, I just got to let this go for myself. My mum's old now. She's like 73. And what happens if I just hold on to this and then one day she's not here? And like I've built up all this, this success that I don't get to share with her. Because she did do the best she could. At the end of the day, she did the best she could. And the other thing is, if all of this shit never happened, I probably wouldn't be the man I am today. So when we go back to everything that's happened is good, this is a big thing for me. Because all this bad shit that ever happened to me made me who I am and now I'm in the situation I'm, I'm in. So i got to remember that. And then one day I was driving, I go, I just got to let this go. i got to look after my mum. Like I started with buying her a car, but I still never, like people have seen me talk about buying mum a house and they go, oh, why didn't he do it sooner? So he should. So, you know what I mean? Shit like that. And I'm thinking, what colour's the house you bought your mum? But <laughs> other than that, other than that, the reason I didn't do it sooner is because of this resentment I had. Because I was like, mum, you can retire now whenever you want, but I don't want you bringing your boyfriend with you. <laughs> Literally. Oh, you said that? Yeah. I go, I'm not buying it for anyone else. It's for you. And then I was like, well, if that's the case, she's never coming. And so I had to let go of like all the shit that happened in the past with her ex and be like, I got on the phone to this, the new boyfriend. And I said, hey, mate, I know I haven't met you yet or I haven't, I haven't taken the time, but it's nothing personal. It's not anything to do with you. It's to do with me. So I apologize. And like my mum says nothing but good things about you. So I need to let that go. So I'm, I'm excited to meet you. And I bought her to the house. And they were living it together now. The The thing that was holding me back was like letting someone else in after everything I'd been through when I was a kid. 
Wow. Yeah. It's, it's so, deep. It's and then I get to read these comments. Oh, about time he bought his mum a house. He has a Lamborghini, but no one knows. Like, I'm, I've been looking after my mum, but, like, there was so much more to it to take that step. That was me letting go of all this bullshit. Mm. And the weight that that bullshit holds is fucking heavy, hey? I reckon it just, it's all these little bottles that just bottle up and you don't realise yeah. how much of a toll it's yeah. playing on you. Like, even when you're saying, I'm driving and I'm fucking fuming. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. But then also, even the thought of, no, you can't have someone else, is going, okay, like, if our key to emotional well-being and happiness a lot of the time is having a relationship as well mm -hmm. and a partner, you go, yeah, I'm giving my mum everything, but I'm stripping away the one thing that's going to give her company and, and that yeah. meaning and love in her life. Mm. So it's kind of like <clears throat> you're helping her, but then y y you're yeah. not. Yeah. It's like, no, you can have this house, but on my terms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I was like, fuck, she makes her happy. Like I've got to, I've got to let go. The only key here is for me to let go. How freeing was that? Yeah, it's good. I still haven't met him. I've had a good conversation with him on the phone. She moves into the house soon. Uh, but I feel so much better now. Yeah. Yeah, like you don't have to hold on to that resentment. I think it's cool. We're seeing a common thing across the whole conversation around you doing something because you couldn't do that thing in the past. You're saying I had to, f had to fight my stepdad, but I felt like I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I was inferior to him mm -hmm. and there was nothing I could do to support my mum. Mm -hmm. So then I got Muay Thai classes. Yeah. And you actually, actually did it. Like when all that fighting happened and you mentioned you swung him around and stuff, had you been, had you been training and no, stuff? No. 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 It was like just, man, it would be like a Wednesday and you're just like the energy in this room, anything could blow out at any moment or <laughs> every day of the week. It was fucking, and I thought that was normal. I remember moving to the Gold Coast and not having anxiety around the house going, oh, this, this is amazing. But it's all subconscious. You don't really know what's going on because you, you haven't sat there and evaluated, like you don't have the emotional maturity to actually know what's happening. And then later in life you start to think, oh, that's why I felt that way at this time. And like you deal with that. And I think I've been pretty good at like recognising shit and uh, doing the right things I need to to make sure I'm all good. Fuck, it's so, it's so crazy. Everything's, everything obviously happens for a reason. It's <laughs> fucking wild when I hear these stories because you kind of go, how important is environment when you're fucking having all these people around you that are just doing stupid shit? Mm. You're going, you have anxiety. You don't feel at home. You're on your tippy toes every time you're in your house. Mm. You kind of go, fuck. Then when you get out of that, you realize the importance of environment, the people around yeah. you. Do you keep your circle making, sh like are you very strict with the people you let in your life now because of all this stuff in the past as well? Yeah, like I, I wouldn't even let that shit near me. Yeah. Like, I'd been in points in relationships where I felt I was being like that. Like I'd find myself like in a scream off with my partner when I was younger and I'd be like, fuck, and I'd get flashbacks of that. Um. And I was like, fucking, I never want to be like that. But yeah, definitely, that's just off topic, but definitely, um, just you recognize that shit early in someone. Like I'm, I'm a good judge of character because of all the experience I've been through. And if I see something off, it's most important with a partner, I think though, because when you have friends around you, like this stuff doesn't just come out, you know? So when you're when, living with them. And yeah, it's what, like you've got to make sure you're with the right people because if you're with the wrong people, the wrong shit's going to come out in you too. It's not just them mm. because I've found myself behaving in ways that isn't me because I've had the wrong people around me. So I guess that does apply for friends, definitely friends, like your partner, family, everything. Like you've got to have the right circle. It's the people uh, seeing you on the good days and bad, highs mm, and lows, mm. laughs, cries, like seeing pe people that experience it all. And the thing is with the partner, right, especially if you live together, you're going, they're seeing you in every state. Yeah. And like with that, little things maybe they don't agree with might bottle up. All these little things just start bottling up in your mind and then all of a sudden it bursts. Mm. And then the smallest little thing might cause this massive fight, but the actual yeah. thing is all the other buildup of stuff. Mm. And I guess just making sure like, and that's why when people talk about like, how do they treat the the waiter? Like how do they treat in all the different yeah, situations? Yeah. How important that is? Oh yeah. I, I watch that too. When I have someone in my circle, I'm like, how are you treating everyone around you? Because with me, what you see is what you get. 
the way I talk to you is the way I talk to everyone. And like, that's so important. That's a very important characteristic. Mm. There's nothing worse than being with someone at fucking a lunch or a dinner and they're treating someone like shit and they're nice to you. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? You know what I also think a, a powerful skill is being able to like reset after a, an encounter. So when you mm. go in, into the office and like, and you've got staff there, how are you treating them? Because mm. how you treat them is going to be different to how you treat like your business partner or how you treat them is different to how you treat your your girlfriend, right? And being able to close one door and open another yeah. and how important that is because you can take someone's a bad interaction into the next one and give it off on someone mm. when they don't even they don't deserve that. Like mm. they weren't even in the previous one. Yeah. It's an important skill to have as well, hey. Mm. I wanted to talk more about the fucking what, what were we We're on? talking about friends yeah. and the circle. Yeah, I've learned as well quickly like I've had a lot of interactions and I've had my intuition tell me like, nah, this isn't right. And in the past I've let it go and s had these people in my circle and then eventually the the truth comes out about who they really are. And I've learned now that with my intuition, it's like more than likely I'm correct. So I'm, I've learned to be able to close those doors quick. It's so important for me now because like there's so much at stake in my life. I've had deals going on with people and I've just cut them because I knew um, or I've had people enter or people are always trying to get into my circle right like it's a big thing left right and center people Crazy, come in. Hey. but uh mate you would know yourself like how long have you tried to like reach out and get me on this podcast it's happened a few you've been messaged me a few times I right? chip away. It's, it's interesting because I, I'm in a weird spot with the pod where like I've just got this absurd confidence with it where I've sent you a message and then I remember I swiped up again. And then after that, I was kind of going, like, I don't really care if he doesn't go back. I know you're going to come on at some point. Yeah. Like, when I'm the biggest in the country, you'll mm, come on. Mm, and so it's mm. great that we we're having this a bit sooner. Mm. But, um, but yeah, 100%. I yeah. can tell that you're a bit, you're strict with who you're letting yeah. in. Like, I saw you with Tim on here, and he's my friend, and I liked what you guys were talking about. And that's what got me to come. Because mm. it's nothing against, like, me thinking I'm good or this or that. You know what I mean? It's I know just like the every reason, right. Yeah, the reason I'm wait, I wait to do the right things is because I've got to suss everyone out. I don't just want anyone in my life, so <sighs> I get reached out all the time with all this different shit, and I just got to. I a hundred percent understand that, and I, but I also wouldn't just come on your podcast because you're the biggest in Australia either. Like I yeah. think that's a shit characteristic, and you know what I mean. I'll, I'll come on the right podcast with the right people. So it takes time for me to see that in someone and you would popped up a few times and I'm like, all right, this seems good. I'm yeah. interested now. And I don't I'm not mean just that interested. Is... Yeah, I'm not just interested in something because someone... The numbers. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and also the, at the same time, like I'm not thinking it that way in the sense of... Because how do you become the, the number one though, mm -hmm. right? And it's like all the characteristics, all the conversations, all the things. It's not just numbers. Yeah. Because yeah. you could have someone that's massive just decide to make a podcast mm. but they don't know how to fucking interview and yeah, they don't yeah, ask yeah. any shit yeah. and it's like yeah they might get some good numbers but it doesn't mean it's a good podcast mm. so yeah that, that was my thoughts with it but yeah i think it's powerful though to have that and have that wall mm. it's a blessing and a curse and that's the same with a lot of things because i'm yeah. the same I, i'm so crit i'm so critical with like who i'm letting in yeah, yeah, yeah. not hanging out with anyone that's not like giving me energy and, and yeah, lighting yeah, yeah. me up yeah. but i think it's just one of those things you need to be selfish and like mm. you need to have some narcissism about you before you're just all altruistic and mm -hmm. all give 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 you have to take a bit yeah i think another thing is as well like if i'd been on every podcast what value is that too yeah for me to come on yours yes yeah. right if i just open up for everyone then it takes my value away too mm. like if i'm closed off it means so much more when i go on something or i'm interacting with someone and, and that's the same with the brands you you're not just exactly all these brands you're working with like yeah. it's with everything and that's mm. like the less you see something the less there is that the more valuable mm. that thing mm. holds and that's probably why it's the same with everything this is marketing one-on-one -on -one, but like the scarce thing it's mm. like there's more value in yeah. in having that scarcity yeah and you've you've done that and that's the same with when you do your drops with the mm. ebt and, and front runner launch right like you 
you made it exclusive and slowly built it up and you mm. built up all this hype and all of a sudden it's got more value on it. And yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. The, you tie that and I was speaking with Tim about it, like you tie in the fact that it's good shit too mm. with all of that marketing and, and, yeah. ex, and excellence on that front. You, it's like a recipe for success. Yeah. I think the best thing about it is like the collab with Front Runner was just a natural progression off me just wanting to wear their shirt. And then even like how people think we've hyped it to sell out or whatever, that was an accident too. We didn't know how big it was. We we printed the drops they would do and it just went boom. And we're like, holy fuck, what's going on here? And then the next drop we ordered triple and it was like, boom, gone. What the fuck? How big is this thing? And then that has created what it is today. You know how we talk about like – was there a method or did you just wing it? No, we saw an opportunity and we capitalised because now we get to do these exclusive drops and they're massive drops, but like they sell out and we've brought it to the point now where it's like, if you don't, if you're not there waiting, you're not getting one ever. You mm. have to wait till next time. So. How do you feel when you see these people wearing the cunny shirts and stuff? The best. It's so cool, right? Yeah, I like, see them walking. If you walk down that Esplanade in Burley, mm. mate, you're seeing these pink cunny shirts. It's so Man, cool to I've see. I've been out at the pav and someone has it on. And like, I love it. Like that guy, I, I just, I'm like, here, have a hundred bucks, cunt. Because I'm paying for that shirt for you. I just do weird shit like that. We were driving the other day and someone was playing basketball and he had the shirt on and I'm screaming out the window and he's just like, he was like this, eh? He was so chill. We, <laughs> I'm screaming, he's doing, doing the peace sign. I'm like, let's go back. I've got a shirt from the new drop in the back. We'll go surprise him. And that's just cool to be able to do that. This guy was so chill, buddies. I'm like, do you even know who I am? Do you know who I am, cunt? He's like, yeah. I'm like, why are you not jumping around or something? But he was just a chill guy, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny how some people don't have any emotion. Mm. I feel or like, like I they're wigging, but they're not showing it. Because I'm sort of like that. Like when something crazy happens to me, I'm like, on the outside, it looks like I'm chilling. But I take time to go and process and think about it and be like, oh, that was crazy. In the moment, you're just trying to deal with it. That's where I was going with that, though, because I, I was saying, like, you you seem to just have this, like, yeah, everything's you – don't, you don't really ride this emotional roller coaster of highs and lows, at least what we see online, right? Like, do you – like, when you get these big things or when you have, like, you buy your dream car or you, you, you do this and that, like, the feelings you have, like, do you, do you express them and do you get real pumped and hyped or is it kind of like, no. oh, it's just another thing? Um, it's not just another thing, but you adapt over time because you have to because you wouldn't be able to deal with this life if you were just fucking not, um, like not accustomed to being able to deal with that sort of shit happening all the time because my life, shit is always happening that's mental. Like, I'm getting a Lamborghini today after this. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's fucking $850,000 car. But I'm here chilling. I haven't even thought about it. But if it was the first time I was getting one, you think I would have come here? I would have been like, I'm waking up and fucking going there straight away. But now I'm like, oh, that's going to be mad. It's going to be a great day. I'm going to the gym. I'm doing this, the small shit that got me to the dance. Then at the end of the day, we'll go get it and we'll enjoy it. And it it's not going to feel the same as when I've I've got four cars. Like, you know what I mean? You yeah. have to adapt. And it's the Lamborghini doesn't make me either. Like I don't place that much value. If I did, I would be through the moon going fucking, you know. But you've already got a Lambo. And yeah. so that's the thing, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's the thing where you kind of go like, and this is why I hate when people are talking, like they hate on a, on a billionaire, like ordering like, or spending like o overspending a couple of thousand dollars mm -hmm. or, and they go, mate, like his thousand dollars is your five cent piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't get mad at him mm -hmm. for overspending. Yeah. It's like, no, he's fucking earned that money. Yeah. He deserves it. It's fuck you money to the point where it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Are you at the stage where your business is getting to a point now where you're going like, like you don't need another Lambo, but you kind of just, you, you want one or what's the reason behind getting another Lambo? Well, and isn't it a Ventador or what are you getting? An STO. STO. Huracan yeah. STO. I think part of it's like, I'm, I get to show people like, look, look what I did. Like, I want to inspire people and you have to back yourself too. Like, it's not easy to just spend that much money on something if you have doubt in yourself. Mm. So am I going to be conservative and think, 
I should be saving everything I've earned now? Or do I go, no, nah, I'm going to keep going and keep hustling every day and back myself and do these crazy things that other people aren't willing to pull the trigger on. I'm willing to just go all in. And part of that is like buying something like that I get to show everyone I came from this and I'm doing this now and I back myself. And if you're in, you might find yourself in a situation. It was very hard to be able to fucking just pull the trigger on things like this. Like I came from nothing and I I had a million dollars in my bank before I had been into a designer shop. Cash. I I felt out of place walking into a designer shop. And I felt like a gronk in Blacktown is what we would say. I'm like, why am I in here? then it's because I like didn't believe in myself, you know. Now I'm happy to just do whatever I want. Mm. And it took a while for you to, to get to that level, obviously. Mm. Like, yeah. and it's, this is what's fucking so awesome about this story though, is like you, if you, and, and I love this quote from Steve Jobs, he says, you can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. Mm. It's like, you don't know where you're going to be, but you can look back and know exactly how you got there. You can yeah, piece yeah. all the pieces together. That's a right? good quote, mate. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I love <laughs> that it. That aligns with everything we're saying today. 100%. I think it's one of those things for me where it's been my life too, where I go, fuck, like, I could have lived a way easier life. Mm. Like there's been so much shit where you get slammed on your face and you got to get back up and just act like nothing fucking happened mm. because you're on your path and you're, and, you're, and you're trying to get shit done. But then at the same time, you look at it and go, fuck. Like th- think about how far, you, and you've already reflected mm. on this, but you look at like, okay, my brother's addicted to ice. I'm from a black town in a, a town where the environment's not very good. You can't walk outside at night. Mm. Like, so literally being able to, and you take one step at a time and you go the next thing, all right, then I move to the Gold Coast. All right, I don't have to have anxiety when I walk in my front mm, door. Mm. And that's a, that's a win. Mm, mm. And, then yeah. you ta- and then you take the next step and you go, oh shit, I'm working for myself now. My yeah. clients are booked out in the gym. Mm. And then you go, oh shit, I'm kind of hit my, I hit a cap now. I need to find something new. Mm. Holy shit, I can do online clients. Mm. And all of a sudden now I've got this free time. And then you slowly take these steps mm. into where you are today. Yeah, it's funny. One thing I want to talk about is like I was happy the whole time but like looking back it might sound as if like I wasn't happy with my life. Like I wasn't a depressed guy but I I felt like I wasn't where I want to be but at the time I still like had a good attitude towards everything so I think that's important. Like I might talk about the past like my life wasn't good but I think it's very important on your way up that you're enjoying it the whole time like you but if have you to recognize be. that it's shit use that as fuel because yeah, yeah. when you look back you go yes i was happy but that's because happiness is only comparatively mm, to what you've mm, experienced yeah. in the past but it wasn't fucking good yeah, like you yeah. look back and go <laughs> like, like yeah, that, that's a really important thing to yeah. distinguish because like all of these times that they're not good, mm, but they mm, shape us and yeah, they're so yeah. important mm. because now you know what, now your good is great mm. because I of g- those. I guess you're right. I was motivated. Yeah. And motivation, being motivated feels good. Yeah. So I always knew I'm just going to, I'd be g up just for progress. Like even getting a full-time job in the bottle shop as a 2IC on 40 grand a year, I was like, yeah. I'm fucking on here. <laughs> it's all relative. But also, I was, then there's the other part in your head that's like, it's not really what I want. Mm. So, and then and then you just keep going because it's not like you wouldn't have expected to be where you are now. But as mm. you said, you just take the steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When was the moment in your life where you're like, "Fuck, this is this is taken off," and like, like when was this moment where you kind of just went, "Fuck, my life's never going to be the same." I don't think I've done that. I've, <laughs> You've never had that moment? It's not been like a... Let no- me think about like... Like you go okay, like this and I then think go it was the, the craziest when it first started happening because you've got to deal with all the emotional side to what comes with everything that's going on. Like I've... I remember like going from like earning two grand a week to ten grand a week and I'm thinking, what the fuck is happening? And then meeting my accountant and we're talking about what's going on. And he's like, this is crazy. I'm like, holy fuck. That's when you buy the car and you're like, I can't deal with it. That's when you can't handle the emotions of everything that's happening. And now that's why I say you need to be able to deal with it because it happens so often now that I would just be going crazy every day. Like, 
So the, there's probably a few moments. But you know what? You know, on that though, the the problem with going crazy every day is the bigger the high, yeah, the get, bigger the low. The downs as well. And 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 it's with the craziest things. Like mm. I learned this when I was cold calling because you 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 get a sale and you're like jumping yeah, yeah. up and down and you're like fuck yes. <laughs> And then what happens though is the next person answers and they go, fuck off. I don't want to know anything about you. Yeah, you're a piece yeah, of yeah. shit. <laughs> and then you go, because you've had this massive yeah, high, yeah. you're down. Mm. Whereas if you get a sale and you go, yep, that's good. Yeah. Big breath. Fuck yeah. Pat yourself on the, on the shoulder. Move on. Yeah. And then someone tells you to fuck off. You go, <laughs> oh, fuck that guy. I yeah, hope yeah. he's all right. Move on. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you celebrated all these things so high, that's why when I speak with some massive people, like I, I remember um, one of my mentors, he's the CEO of Forbes Australia and he um he says earlier on his in his career he had bad months, and then he's like later on his in his career he had bad weeks, then he had bad days, then he had bad hours, and mm. now he has bad moments. Yeah, yeah. Where he's like, okay, That's shit good. happened, shit happened. I've been through so much shit now that my tolerance is a lot better. Mm. Something shit happened. Hard's only relative to what I've experienced in the past. <sighs> mm. What's next? Yeah. And I think that's a when you can get to that level, which when you go through more shit, more highs, more lows, it gets a bit more numbing. Mm. It's a blessing and a curse again because you can't enjoy them as much. It's not as special, but then you don't get as too mm. too big of downs. But it's a constant. You feel good about it. It's not just a peak and a and a drop. It's like every day I'm so happy with everything I've done and everything I've got. It's just not an unrealistic feeling through my body when I get it now. It's like. It actually builds up and becomes more special to me over time. Um, I was going to talk about how I built my house and I think this is my dream house or like when do you have these moments where you're like, oh, I've really done it. Well, when I built my house and finally had it and walked in, I didn't feel any high. I felt low. Why is that? I don't know. You're just walking in there and it's like I've had this such this hype around it. The highs have been the whole process of doing it, right? The highs have been like buying the land, designing the house, the whole process of what comes with it. And then you get there and you walk in and you go, well, this isn't what I thought it would feel like. I think what we can talk about then is expectation. And what are your thoughts on having expectations in your life? Because what I see there is is like when your expectations here and your reality is here, the gap between that's disappointment. Mm. So you put these big expectations mm. on how you're going to feel when you get this thing then you get it and you go, fuck, it's not all made up to what it's supposed to be. Well, I think for me, the lesson in that was it's not about the house. It's about everything you'd been through to get it. Mm. That's what matters. Do That's you think it's, sh- the, do you think it's the journey that it, that's to get there or the characteristics and the person you're it's building like, along yeah, that way? It's the person you're becoming. Like, cause some people might do something and feel completely undeserving of that house. Like what if you're doing some, you can't, it's not about the house. That's the whole point. It's about who you are as a person and what you've done and what you've learned along the way. And what you've been through to yeah, get there. Exactly. Yeah. And so, that's coming back. If you got given it all, yeah. then it wouldn't feel good either. So now that I know that, when I get the house, it's not about the house. It's about me as a person. And I like I'm moving into a new house soon and like I, can, I know how to deal with the experience of it. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is all great. And then, but I'm going to sit there by myself and think about my life. When I sit in that house, I'm not going to go, this is a mad house. I'm going to sit there and go, I was a boy from Blacktown. I'll just watch this podcast actually when I move in. (laughs) Talk to myself about my whole experience. But yeah, that's the point. I think it gets so, it's, it's going to, it's that feeling when you sit on that Mm, couch mm. and you're alone Yeah, and you just look at that and. I don't know where your house is, but like, it, like you look at it and just go, holy shit, like I've done this. Yeah. And, and and also you go, I fucking deserve yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. And that's the powerful feeling. Yeah. Like I remember I made a video a couple of months ago about that, going like all of these shit times and everything gives you the confidence in yourself that when you achieve it, you go, I, I fucking deserve, mm. I've earned every single piece of this house. Yeah. Because you've been through so much shit. Mm, exactly. Because yeah. there's, there's been times where I didn't feel deserving of things I had, but I've learned like, fuck, I've been truthful. I've built my business with integrity. I've worked hard. I have fucking worked hard. Like I used to think I didn't actually work that hard. And then people see what I do because I'm just loving it. But I fucking work hard too. And the result is like a product of everything I've done. So I feel deserving. And like I've been a good person to all those around me. So it just is what it is now. 
do you feel like with goal setting and achieving all those things that you actually want, like, do you feel like it's always a case of you climb one mountain and you, there's just another one that you've got to look up to and, and achieve? Or do you, like, where do you draw the line? Well, it's not about the goal. It's about, like... The progression and how yeah, you feel during that. progression as a person. If you're always, like, focusing on yourself as a person. Because, okay, everything I'm doing now as a person to build this business is me. I'm not being fake by doing anything I'm doing. So why would it ever end? Because, so I get to a goal, goal. It's not about the goal. It's about what I want to do every day. And maybe that, I don't think there'll be a day where I go, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. And I think, I think with that as well is because people always paint this thing around you like, oh, all the, and it's always broke people that say this, mm. but they always go, oh, but they're just, they're just in this current constant chase of getting the next thing. They're never content mm. when they talk, when they look at people that are successful and you kind of go, it's not about the actual goal that we're setting. Mm. The reason we keep climbing another mountain is because of the journey and mm. how we felt doing that. If you get, if, if you see someone that's really successful, but they, the reason they're successful in terms of financially is they got inherited $500 million from their family. They're probably not as driven to go. They probably mm. would sit on a beach in the mm. Bahamas and just sit there all day, probably have a shit life, Yeah. but it's because the progression that we love to feel. And that's why we even do it. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I'd love to sit on a beach in the Bahamas every day and be content, but I'm not content. I'm content chasing and, like, working on progressing and growing as a person. And I think you have to you have to get to that point where you can sit on a beach and go, this isn't me, mm -hmm. to realise that, though. Because like, it would be very nice. I can sit on the beach for a week, maybe. Max. But then I'm going to go crazy. I'm not going to be content. I wish I could. And that's why <laughs> and that's why they say 10-day holidays are so powerful because like so you can holiday for 7 days a lot of the time and then after that you're like fuck let me just get back home. Mm -hmm. But those extra 3 days of you itching to get back home is what makes you fucking turn into a yeah. beast when you get back. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I think like too many people don't have the life that they want and they try and tear down people that have the shit that they want. And then they go, oh, but like he's not happy because he's never content. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, mate, how about you try and do this and you achieve this level of success and you try and be happy at, with with doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the journey comes with all the different things mm -hmm. and that's just a constant battle though. Constant battle. Yeah. And I want to ask you one thing before we close this out. It's, it's an interesting one and I always find it's fascinating when there's people um, that have achieved so, so much. And, and come so far, like after this, and you're in this phase right now where you're at, like what would you think your biggest challenge is right now? Like out, like now that you've got all the money, yeah, yeah. you can do whatever you want. Like what would you say your biggest challenge is right now? Yeah, one of the biggest challenges I've had is just being able to continue doing the right things every day. Like, I've, there's been times where I've just gone off off track and partied too much and done shit that doesn't align with my values. And the biggest challenge is just, oh, I don't know if it's a challenge, but like the most important thing is that I'll keep doing things every day that align with my values because you don't want to do self-destructive shit. If I go and party too hard, it really fucking affects everything in my life. You hear my stomach? No. Can you guys hear that? No. Nah. <laughs> if I if I go and party too hard, it affects everything in my life and it's not who I want to be. And th you remember, you got the option to do anything and like it really doesn't affect my business that much if I go and have fun. But it affects my mental space. So I know I have to limit that side of me. You got to remember, like I got a brother that's a drug addict. We have the same genetics. And I put that effort into whatever, into the positive, but I have that animal in me. It's what makes me so good at what I do, but I could take the wrong side that he took, but I don't, I choose not to. And the battle is sticking to my values every day and doing the right things. And then managing that other side where I like to socialize, have a drink, but I shouldn't push it too far. Yeah. I guess it's that all or nothing characteristic mm. that a lot of people that a successful have though, because mm. it's all or nothing. It's just a matter of what in, mm. and yeah, that's why exactly. it's so easy to, to go all right, fully off the grog 
or fully on the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And nothing <laughs> in between. Yeah. Like, like addicted to something, whatever that might be. Yeah. And it's a blessing and a curse. Mm. It's just a matter of where you choose to use that. Mm. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a powerful thing, and it's probably the thing that's got you to where you are. Mm. But at the same time, you can slip up. Yeah. And so you would say that would be your biggest challenge is making sure that you're staying aligned with those values mm. and and those things in your life. Off the top of my head, yes, I'm, I'm trying to think of other battles I have, but that probably stands out to me the most. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And you think, like, for, for me, you keep saying, you keep referring back to, like, it's that progression and it's that thing that you're, like, you just need to keep leveling up. Do you ever get worried about, like, never being, like, never being able to just sit back and, like, relax? No, or do you feel like you can relax now? Because I remember when you said when you started taking off and you started delegating all of the tasks, you felt like you lost your sense of purpose. Mm. Do you get scared that you are going to have to be constantly go, go, go till the day you die or else you're going to lose that? Nah, I think like I'll be, I feel like you got to ride it while it's there and capitalise. So I know my time will come. I'll just deal with things as they come. Like there's going to be a time where I'm I'm not the cunny guy anymore and I'm going to have to deal with that. But for now, I am. And for now, things are going well. So I'm just going to keep taking advantage of them as they come and I'm going to find a new challenge at a later part in my life. Well, this isn't what I'm doing anymore, but I'll always find a way to work it out. And if there's a time where I get to rest, then so be it. <laughs> but then also you kind of go like, Maybe that's not what's going to fulfill us anyway. Mm. Resting, we're not going to enjoy that. Mm. The final thing I just want to say is um, a question I have around, you, you were talking about how confidence and how it's built up, but then you're saying when you party and you slip up from those values, mm. the mental game yeah. is the worst part about it all. Yeah. Talk to me about like there's a massive difference between confidence and self-esteem. And obviously confidence a lot of time is like how people view you. Mm. Like how you are viewed, mm. but then self-esteem is like how you view you. Mm. And like when you look at the mirror, like who looks exactly. back, do you ever have problems with self-esteem issues? Because for me, when I look at it and I go like, when my life is documented online and you would get this, I, I, I get this, you'd probably get it on an even enhanced level of how much of a good cunt you are and how amazing everything is and how awesome you are. Mm. And then for me, I, at least every now and then, sometimes I'll go like, fuck, like, you couldn't walk a day in my shoes. Like it's not all as ma as amazing as it looks mm -hmm. out to be. And then sometimes I can get this little self-esteem issue. Mm -hmm. Do you have any problems with self-esteem ever? Well, if I'm being honest, I think like what everyone sees about my life online, my life's better than that. Mm -hmm. Literally better than that. I hold back with what I have and how, how fucking good my life is all the time. But when I give into that little demon and I'm going and doing the things that don't align with my values then I won't sit in a room with the confidence or self-esteem about myself that I would have if I'm constantly doing the right things. Mm. Like I can't walk into a room and get that respect if I'm not doing the right things on the back end that I should be doing every day. So that's probably the biggest thing on why you need to be doing things that align with your values every day because then when you meet someone or you show up or like you talk about your life, you truly believe the you things are you're who saying. you say you are. You, exactly. And then you can look yourself in the mirror and know that. Yeah. So I guess just on if that. If I come into this off a bender, I would be feeling like a piece of shit, right? It's a Monday. I had a good balanced weekend this weekend and I'm here. I had so much fun and now I'm back to work Monday and that's great and that's what I want to do. Yep. And, yeah. And I, and I guess for me, it's not so so much of like, I'm showing stuff that's not my life. Everything I show is my fucking life. Mm -hmm. Life's amazing. It's yep. awesome. Mine's more of a mental thing. It's like, it's not about all the material, or everything that we do. It's more of like a mental thing where they like, it's, it's kind of like they see the tip of the iceberg and that's how they judge. Mm. And I'm just more so thinking like, do you ever just go like, like, do you ever have these thoughts where like, it's sh stressful. You've got to manage mm. team. You've got all this stuff to do. And there's this level of pressure, but then, it's kind of like you, you, sh you still sh trying to show up and yeah. be who you are and then that can sometimes play a role. This is another time because I deal with all that so well. Sometimes I don't even know I'm dealing with everything that's going on. There's a lot, so much going on, right, John? <laughs> Shit is never ending in my life and it's just John's another, rolling his eyes. <laughs> it's just another day for me. Like I don't even know but I do know when I'm not doing the right things. That's when it really kicks in. I sit there and go, fucking am I built for this? 
but it's it's only because like the actions I'm taking just aren't the right ones for me to walk into a room and feel like I deserve respect. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if I'm doing the right things, it's all, it all works out and it all makes sense. But it's very important I stay following my values. I know I keep going back to that, but it's, it's because there's so much to it. Like I don't, how can I sit there and like speak to my staff and inspire them if I'm not doing the right things all the time? Yeah. Like, well, it's shiny it's, object syndrome as well, where it's like you, as you're saying, there's things coming to you every minute of the day. There's opportunity here, 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 here. But if you're not staying true to your mm. value, then you can just steer off and, and go in different ways. And that's when you start to have those battles mm. in your, in your mind. So it's being able to resist sort short term pleasures a, a little bit, say no to things that aren't aligned. So in turn, you can then have a full cup that you can pour from in a yeah, sense. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, man. Um, um, Thank it, you, Alfie. Oh, <laughs> the God. new nickname. It's, de- <laughs> it's, defi- it's definitely not not Alfie. The name's Chris. Um, I, he walks. He walks in here and goes, "Why is your nickname Alfie?" And I just go, "Mate, it's 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 not." I don't know John, where you heard that. That's his new nickname now. But just between us, <laughs> just between us. I don't know about that. But um, no, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. <laughs> Before we wrap up, is there anything exciting you're working on that you want to share? Is there anything that you think we've left out? We've covered a lot, but is there anything you think you want to share or talk about? So many exciting things. We've got the new Cunny Drop this Thursday, but this, this will Thursday. probably this be out This comes out on this. Monday, but so it's going to... So you drop. missed out. You yep. fucking missed out. I'm, you missed- I'm going to get a new car today. I'm excited about that. Yep. What else have we got What color is the car? What's the? It's like a satin grey sort of thing. Sick. Yeah, you'll see it. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for the show. Thank appreciate you, for you dude. Me, brother. And um, if you guys have stuck around to the end, really appreciate you all. Leave us a review on Spotify or Apple. It helps the show grow. Helps us get amazing guests just like Adam back on the show. And we'll keep growing and killing it together. That sounds great. Right, one step at a time. We're signing out for this week, and I'll see you guys next week. Catch you, cunnies. See you, cunnies. <laughs>